talking about the mystery of Elijah in eternity. There was something amazing in the word of God that revealed Elijah in an aspect of the prophet's office that was very powerful, even to the degree in the course of Elijah's life, we see that Elijah is not only operating um, in the life of that hairy body, Elijah, but now we see him operating as John the Baptist. And if you think about this in a deep sense, you notice that John the Baptist also has Elisha's. If you recall, it was Elisha's, um, it was uh, John the Baptist's uh, disciples. So Elijah has Elisha and the sons of the prophets. But then we have John the Baptist, where Elijah is lodged and hiding inside of. And John the Baptist has disciples, which represent sons of the prophet Elisha. You see what I'm saying? So in every generation that Elijah comes, he has sons. In every generation where Elisha shows up, Elijah with a J, not Elisha, but Elijah, he has sons in which he imparts his spirit into them. Now, look at this people of God. Elijah has a lot of mysterious ways about him, which I'm about to reveal on this line through this broadcast. But something took place where Elijah, every time he would pray, he would pray earnestly. Apostle James tapped into Elijah's spirit and was able to talk about Elijah. But a lot of people didn't catch. I think that's James chapter five. Why was Apostle James able to tap into the prayer life of Elijah if he wasn't there? James did not come until the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So how was he able to give a report about the prayer life of Elijah? I want you to understand this mystery as well. James, Peter, and uh, John, they all had accessibility to Gabriel. Gabriel is the personal angel of Elijah. When James wrote about Elijah's prayer life, I want you to also remember that James viewed Elijah while Jesus was praying. When Jesus's garments turned white as snow in a white that could not even be named on the earth. Though you know white as a meaning of cleanliness and purity and holiness, white also means continual communication with the spirit of God. That's why when Jesus is praying, his garments turns as a white because it represents that he's in continual communication with the spirit of God. So why didn't Jesus do any evil because of his continual communication with the spirit of God? Why don't we see Jesus make any mistakes? Because Jesus is in continual communication with the spirit of God, which is the secret of perfection. Now, you know, why Romans chapter eight, verse 14 says that those that are led by the spirit of God, those are the sons of God. Because being led by the spirit is being led by a communication system that's not from the earth. It's from heaven. So therefore, you can only do what the heavenly regions do. And all they do is walk in perfection, obedience, and light, love, righteousness, and peace, and joy. Elijah did something in his life in uh, 1 Kings chapter 18 that was real profound, which I want to show you. The Bible said that Elijah took his face when he began to pray and pit it between his knees. Now, I want you to remember what I'm telling you. He took his face 
and he put his face, placed his face between his knees. That means he took his head and put it between his knees. There's a reason why Elijah did this. And Gabriel told me to teach on this so that you could catch this mystery. What Gabriel said to me is that the knees represent humility and prayer in often cases. Though it has many different meanings, the knees. But humility and prayer. So when he took his face in verse 42, and put his face between his knees. Your face represent your identity. That's why when you take a ID, a picture, they don't take a picture of your shoulder or your chest or your feet or your fingers or your arms or your, your, your torso. They take a picture of your face to identify you. So I want you to see this. Elijah placed his face between his knees, which means that Elijah took on the identity, the nature, and the personality of humility and prayer. Now, if you want to catch this, remember in Numbers chapter 12, that's why we see Moses being said of that he was the most humblest man in all the earth. And God didn't speak to him like a prophet. God spoke to him face to face. Now you understand why Moses and Elijah could be buddies in the spirit realm. You ever thought, why wasn't Elijah moving with Jeremiah? On that Mount of Transfiguration. Why wasn't Elijah traveling with um, Jonah? Elijah was traveling with Moses because both him and Moses understand the spirit realm in the realm of humility and prayer. Both Elijah and Moses both used the weapons of humility and prayer to do supernatural things. So both Elijah and Moses, both in their time, Elijah called down fire from heaven, the fire came, burned the captain in his 50. Moses used humility and prayer to turn the waters with his staff. And Moses and Elijah both did supernatural things with the weapons of humility and prayer. Both of them use these laws to release the great God Jehovah into the earth realm. The mystery of Elijah is that in eternity is that God can go on vacation and use Elijah. If Jehovah goes on vacation, you'll never recognize it. Because he has transferred the same ability he has to Elijah. So before Malachi closed his book, he begins to speak about Elijah coming to the earth. And if the earth don't receive Elijah, he's going to strike the earth with a plague. The two witnesses that stand before God, which we also see in Revelation, is Elijah and Moses. Though Enoch is a God in the spirit and he's great and mighty and he's with Jehovah before the throne as well. But the two witnesses, there's a reason why they're called witness. See, a lot of people miss this. Enoch was not in the functionality of a witness, yet he was a witness. And let me explain this to you. Imagine if somebody has an encounter with God. That means that they are a witness for everybody to see. 
But a true functionality of a witness is when I can bring you into your own encounter. When Enoch had the encounter with God, he didn't stay forever to mentor people into an encounter. Elijah did. Moses did. Enoch was taken away. Let me show you even a deeper revelation. Peter, James, and John encounters Jesus. Philip encounters Jesus. Thomas encounters Jesus. But they're able to bring others into that encounter after Acts chapter 1 verse 8. So they became witnesses. So a witness in functionality is someone that not only has an encounter, but is able to bring you into that same encounter with them. Elijah brought people into the spirit realm and still is doing it and is about to do it and is about to do it. It's happening. It's happening.